Hi, my name is Sotectus, and today we're going to be playing some Dungeons and Dragons. This is a, a campaign that my brother created. It's called The Shadow of Ortis. Okay, so we last left off um, our uh, band of soon to be traveling mercenaries meet up in a town called Leavenwood and eventually start making their mark when tasked by Oris Bosch, the uh, owner and tender of the uh, bustling crow asks you to figure out why some people have gone missing. You end up doing some, uh, ending up doing some uh, digging and uh, researching and you find out Brutus is be behind it. You find him, you uh, dispose of him, and you discover a interesting uh, symbol on the back of a cloak of his and uh, you go to Oris and he has no idea what it is so he sends you to Leavenwood Forest to uh, have you see his friend Majority Goodridge, check it out and see if she knows anything about it. As you go into the forest, uh, you face off against a dire wolf and its pup. Uh, you have an interesting conversation between two trees, uh, Alder Snarl and uh, Elm Elmbro, Elmber, something Elmbro, like that. I believe. And uh, fight an ogre. Uh, then you uh, come across a lake, which you tread across with ease. Uh, to find a chest, and once you open the chest, you uh, you see uh, a, a siren. siren. A yeah. siren, uh, like the whirlpool, starts kind of forming around this little outlet of land in the middle of the lake, and that's where we last let off. So uh, we'll have everyone roll initiative. All right. Get off the dice. Now we're getting. Now we're getting into it. <laughs> so D twenty. Yeah, D20. Yeah. Oh, wow. 5e is different. Never played 5e. Well, once. I got real high again, too. I got 7. And Eight then add, and add your initiative modifier to it, which is next to your armor class. So I got 4. Uh, I got 9. Initiative is right here. Oh, 19. Oh, shit. <laughs> <Nine. Okay. laughs> I'll, I'll get to you. Okay, you That's what I Okay, so 25 to 20. No. 20 to 15. Yes. What do you get? 19. Alright. Okay, 15 to 10. 10 to 5. <laughs> 9. <laughs> and you're last, okay. Alright. Uh, go ahead and make a, either a perception check or survival Wait, check. Wait, did you say I'm not with the group yet? Yeah. Go ahead and make a survival check or a perception. Five, but I have a plus five with survival. Okay, so, so you kind of you're in the area and um, you're not sure where this commotion is coming from, but you start to hear surges of water, and you are drawn to think that it's coming from the lake. Does kinda that nearby. sound magical, or does it sound like a waterfall? Sounds like a rushing, uh, rushing river, but okay. you know there isn't a river, a river right river. there. Okay. Okay, so, um, Talia, you're up first, so uh, you're standing there right next to the chest, and um, once it's opened, you see the water start to bubble and kind of whirlpool around you, and out pops this kind of siren that starts like, kind of jumping out of the water like a dolphin, and then eventually it kind of rises up, and it's being supported kind of like by a column of water about 10 feet in the air and about 15 feet away from you. Okay. Um... Oh my goodness. What would you like to do? I'm gonna go off of instinct and step backwards Okay. a couple of feet and draw my dagger. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so the siren is coming up. Let's see here. Alright, so uh, the siren kind of looks at you two and is all... Well, you think you can take my treasure? Ah! <laughs> and, it, and it sweeps down uh, towards Tuck. Um, but before it makes its strike, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Fuck shit. Both of us? No, just Tuck. Uh, 11. What, with your yeah, wisdom? That's... Oh, okay. oh, wisdom. What wisdom oh, saving throw? Oh, my God. Uh, I got 16. Okay, as, as the siren is coming towards you, you start to realize how beautiful of form this um, water entity has. It's nice and curvy, and it starts to 
whisper almost directly into your ear, even at such a great distance. And you start to, Whisper you start, <laughs> and you start, you feel your eyes almost starting to glaze over like you're awestruck with a beautiful creature. Uh, and then you just snap out of it. And uh, the siren kind of, ah, and that goes in and it's going to uh, scratch once on your chest. Okay. Tarek, right? Tuck. tuck. Oh, it's just tuck. Yes. Oh, that makes it really easy. Uh, 11? For, uh, to hit? Armor class, uh. It does okay. Tonight? I'm gonna make the se- make the second hit. Fifteen. It does not. So as the siren comes out and starts to swipe at your um your chest, and you manage to uh, grab your morning star and kind of parry off her arms. You were like the small door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it is your turn. The siren is two feet or so in front of your face. Okay. I'm just gonna slam down with both my morning star and my sickle. I just. Okay, go ahead and roll for an attack. Like, as a fighter, I can do two primary... Uh, yeah, yeah, two attacks. Okay. So roll once for the Morningstar. I got eight. Plus your... Plus your, um... Strength? Attack modifier. Oh, attack modifier. Uh, so for your Morningstar. So... The plus eight. Oh, yeah. Plus eight. So 16, that hits. Go ahead, go ahead and uh, roll for damage. Then 1d8... This one, right? Yeah. No, no. D8 is that one, I believe. Eight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then uh, my second. And then your second attack. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> critical. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm assuming a twenty is a critical, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and before that, your strength modifiers added to Plus your five. damage. So. That's going to be good. Okay. Jesus. So, yeah. uh. Now, <laughs> so, a hell of a hit. Oh so now on a critical, you're gonna roll the die for damage. Okay. So whatever that I is. I have a d4. Okay, now roll that. Four. You double the die and then add your modifier. <laughs> All right, so that's eight plus uh, eight, so sixteen. Damn. <laughs> um. Okay, so this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so as the siren is like kind of waving through the air, almost as if it's um. Floating, uh, it, it's trying. It like seems to you as it kind of waves its body in the same motions, and as you're kind of almost awestruck, it goes for the attack, which kind of knocks you out of it, and you parry both as if it was nothing. When uh, you when you push her off, you take your morning star and hit the side of her head, and there's definitely form, but it's also very much water based. So you just see like it indent, like a good couple inches, and with your sickle, you take it and with uh, you hit the back of her neck and kind of, and at that point the siren falls limp on the ground. <laughs> Damn, I ain't messing with that. <laughs> oh my god. So, so doing, doing the damage in this group. Uh, yes. And then at this point, Jareth and Malfortune look at you and they're just like, uh, I, uh, and Jareth's like, um, well, I, uh, I don't, uh, well. This isn't really what I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodbye. And he snaps his fingers, and his whole body begins to like kind of shimmer. Before you, and before you know it, he's almost completely vanished out of thin air. Who's Jeff? He is the human wizard. Okay. Um, in the party. Not anymore, apparently. Uh, and then uh, my, my fortune like kind of looks in uh, confusion, and he looks at you, and he's uh, he just kind of says. Okay, uh, well, I'll go meet you back in Leavenwood. See ya! And he kind of just jumps in the lake and starts swimming <laughs> as fast as he can to the shore. So you guys are at the corpse of the siren and... Oh my lord, I won't jump. <laughs> with, with the, um... With, uh... With the corpse of the siren at your feet and an open chest, what would you like to do? Um, I want to loot her body first, see... Okay, go ahead and roll an uh, investigation check. Uh, 12 plus... 5. Uh, 10. So, what's your total? 10. Okay. Um, you're kind of looking around. You get the sensation that um, most of the siren's belongings were on uh, in the chest that you had already looted. Mm-hmm. Um, but digging around, you find some almost invaluable small pearls 
So uh, go ahead and mark down that you found four eh, lifting pearls. Eh, lifting. <laughs> Made sure to do they that. They have a dent in them. <laughs> They're a little discolored. Inventory is... Just write it wherever you feel. Uh, that's how I got you a notebook. Another treasure page. Oh, that's, that's oh, why well. we have these. So, uh, do you guys want to make your way back to the, the other side of the pond where you came? Yes. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, we say over the next ten minutes or so, you take your time to go back to the other side of the lake. And um, you just kind of hear like a... Coming from the bushes and the thick, thick trees about 20 feet ahead of you. What would you like to do? Um, probably just go investigate. I mean, yeah. go walk up to it. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll a, um, can, just, just, just for the hell of it, can you roll a stealth check? I should <laughs> <laughs> uh, 13 plus 2 on my dexterity. So your stealth right here. Oh, so 15. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. You as well, Talia. Um, I have a 10. Well, what's oh. your perception? So is it Lenendorf? You have plus Lendorf. 6 Lendorf. perception. Lendorf. Lendorf. Okay. She has plus 6 perception. Plus my 3, so 9. Damn. Okay, Damn. so uh, as you... You're perceptive as fuck. So <laughs> as you uh, approach where that um, bushel thing... That noise where it came from. You have no noise idea what wheeling outside. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, that's stuff right again. Like so pig squealing in the forest. As you approach, you have no idea what could have made that noise. In fact, you're unsure if it really happened. <laughs> so we're going it, it's crazy. It's up to you if you want to reveal yourself. Did I witness any of that happening? Um. Yeah, let's. You, maybe the last little. Six seconds of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um. The battle. <laughs> Do you wish to reveal thing? yourself? I'm gonna stay kind of hidden as the best I can. Okay. So what was your? Would you roll again? Fifteen. A uh, fifteen. Okay. So um, you guys kind of go, <laughs> <laughs> and you proceed going forward. Uh, you see the left that you guys previously came from when you talked to Elm Elmbro. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and then you, you walk another 30 or so minutes, and then you come to that fork in the road where, you know, if you kept going straight, you come to the opening in the field where you fought that odor. Mm -hmm. And then the the right is the path you haven't taken also yet. Also the one to the other tree. And then... Yeah. We've already talked to the other tree, so then it'd be so, going towards... Is Wasn't it like a little town? Well, tile? actually, I want to go back to the other tree, because we had some of his... Like, we got that potion that the other... Tree had. Elixir of life. Yeah, the elixir of life. He gave it to you. I know, but now this other tree, he was asking for. Yeah, so uh, when you first spoke to Aldersnarl, he gave you the potion to deliver to his brother. Oh, that's yeah. right, that's right, my bad. Um, whoever, whoever picked that up, just go ahead and say it has two uses, and it gives you the effects of having a long rest. Oh, man. That's pretty good. I'm not sure. I don't. I... Let, for the sector of Beverly, you say yeah. Tuck has it. Anyway, so do you wish to go down the path you have not yet dis uh, discovered? We still have that symbol, and that may... Yeah, let's just keep Yeah. On. Okay. So you spend the next uh, maybe 15 minutes kind of weaving past some trees that weren't um, mauled down as the main path, so it's kind of a difficult trek. It takes a little bit longer than you think. Um, and then you see a small opening start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and light shining harder and harder the closer you get. Uh, both of you go ahead and make a dexterity check. I mean, de dexterity saving throw, sorry. Oh my lord. I got a natural one. Okay. So, plus. Uh, no, if it's natural one, you don't put any modifiers on it. It's so eight. Is that a critical fumble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opposite of a 20. Uh, so... Oh my god. Uh... Talia, you're 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 very um, accustomed to forests, so you kind of have a keen eye because of where you grew up at times in your life. Uh, however, Tuck, uh, ironically <laughs> enough, for spending much of his time in a forest, is kind of just ah, da, 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 and uh, doesn't notice a um, snare per se on the ground. Oh, man. And as you pull your foot directly into it, a huge net comes out of the side of the trees and. And you're now ass up, heads down, stuck in the net. <laughs> ass up, heads down. And then again, you kind of hear a little bit, of, a, a bit of a twig break, about ten feet or so behind you. Okay. 
boy. <laughs> uh, so, someone's uh, so big. Hey, I'm, uh, actually, I'm actually quite small. I'm four eleven and a half. I was say you're pretty tiny, aren't you? Yep. For uh, oh my tiefling. goodness, I'm a tiefling. Tiefling, tiefling. Yeah. Four. I didn't realize. You're, you're, you're the tallest person in the party, and he's a gnome. So no, no, no. Caden's a gnome. Oh, Caden's a gnome. Okay. Oh my goodness. Am. Yeah, I don't know what you are. So Tuck is hanging about five feet above the ground, <sighs> snaggled up in a, uh, a nice little cozy net. Okay. Um. I'm trying to get it Wait. Down. Well, yeah, but I want to see if there's a rope attached to a tree or some other thing. Sure, go make an investigation check. Nine. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, I pretty want, much you said in plain a, sight. You said it's about five feet? Five feet down. All right. I light the whistle and call Lorenzo <laughs> to come bite the rope. Uh, so uh, as Talia is trying to be as helpful as she can to try and find the rope, <laughs> she's having a little bit of trouble, and then she finally sees it, and she's like, ah! And all of a sudden, you, behind you, hear like a... <laughs> I have a mastiff for a mount. I heard that. And, oh, that's a mastiff. And then this... He's black, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this black, huge dog that you're not oh. sure where he came from, you've never seen him before, just starts galloping. You just hear the, the thuds in the earth. And you see him jump almost completely over you, and <laughs> and uh, it's quite an amazing sight. You've never seen something quite so magnificent. <laughs> so uh, at, it takes him like a good ten seconds, but the 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 rope breaks. You take three points of falling damage. <laughs> okay. So you gather yourselves um, and you continue going forward for another about five minutes or so, and you see uh, a cottage of some sorts so that's almost entirely made of trunks of trees and the the roof itself is kind of like a light hay kind of grassy texture and you see a, a well just off to the side of it and closer to you is a small campfire that's still lit okay um. okay do you think we should take precaution or should we I'm gonna just do my best to, to follow them okay you're you're pretty good they're they're oblivious okay <laughs> You get the sensation that this must be where Majori lives. It's uh, you've traveled far enough, and this is the first house you've seen. So uh, they're seeking okay. out Majori. Yeah. Yes. What um, do you wish to do? Um, I want to make a. Hmm. I think just a perception check for what. Um, to see if we can see anybody inside the cabin, or you'd have to walk up. It's about eighty feet oh, or so okay. away from you. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna wield my weapons and just proceed forward and have uh, Talia wait back, if that's all right with you. <laughs> I guess. Um. Why? I just wanted to go check it out. <laughs> that's, that's... And um, as you guys are having this little petty uh, conversation, uh, out from the thicket, a huge, large wolf that's white with a gray strip that goes down its back, it looks immediately familiar. This is the dire wolf you met when you first entered the that forest. Fucker, we saved its kid. And it starts like... I saved its it, kid. <laughs> it, it starts snarling and gets really low to the ground until it realizes who you are. And it starts uh, running towards you, and it jumps in the air, and as it's in the air, you, uh, it just kind of, and the, the, there's this like twisting and mending kind of uh, a magical effect, and then out pops Majori in the air and lands on the ground and starts walking as she lands. Wow, what the heck? Absolutely. Who are you and what are you doing in my forest? Well, um, we, we came to look for Majori, and, uh, I think we ran into you before. Um. <laughs> Back when. I don't have time. There are things to do. Okay, well, we have this. Why are you here? We have this symbol on a cloth that okay, is why? very unfamiliar. Who sent you? What? <laughs> <laughs> He's a barkeep in uh, Levenwood. Levenwood. Oris? Oris. Yes. Oh, good lord. Oris. Okay, show me this cloth, I guess. All right. 
And uh, at this point, Majority, without even looking in your direction, uh, Lenenderoth? Lenderoth. Lenderoth. She uh, calls out your name without even looking, almost as if she knows exactly where you are. Uh, do you wish to reveal yourself at that point? Step from the forest. And as you... I don't know the quite... I'll get it down eventually, just for right now. <laughs> uh, as you... Uh, as she's saying this, you're kind of looking around, and about 10 or 20 feet away, out steps this... Um, you know what, just explain to what you look like as, as you're stepping out. Uh, out steps a dark figure in a green cloak. Seems about as tall as a... as a, you'd expect a normal elf to be. Mm-hmm. Um, has very dark skin. Okay. Something you may not have recognized before. Steps from the forest with his hood on. Can't really see his face at this point. You can't tell that it's a heat. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, as he approaches... She motions you all to come into her little homely abode. Do you wish to follow? Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, you, you take a uh, little bit of time to walk into the house and get a little comfortable. Um, inside is almost uh, immaculate, e- even though it has been almost entirely made of the surrounding elements of the forest, such as the bark of trees, um, dirt clumps kind of as a flooring with slightly... Um, big, thinnish planks of wood. Um, almost nearly everything, like furniture, everything's made out of either twig, leaves, or grass, or any, some kind. And she motions you to sit down on the, the little sofa tree thing. <laughs> As you sit down, um, uh, Lendoroth is just kind of sitting there with his arms folded, staring you guys down. Um, and she says, okay, okay, show me, show me this symbol. Well, we dropped, uh, we had a very large fight with this man named Brutus. Ah, I being, yes, I am very aware of who that man is. We ended up killing him after he was being possessed. And her face kind of grows blank as you are saying this. Um, but there were these two dark figures that were kind of like, we assumed that it was souls that were being, like, put into Brutus, but after we killed him, we there was no sight, and we found the symbol on Brutus. Okay. You hand it over, and she looks at him. No immediate reaction. She's almost just as clueless as you are, and as Oris. And she looks at it, and she's like, uh, I don't really, I don't know what this is, really. Uh, give me one second. And she puts it down, and she goes in to this makeshift bookshelf and starts, like, um, sorting through different sized of books and color and she starts looking through some and and she's uh, I'm not really sure I mean I can research this as much as I can but unfortunately I can't really give you an immediate answer as of yet um, but take this and she gives you two sheets of parchment paper and she hands it to Talia and uh, she explains to you Talia this is a uh, enchanted parchment Essentially, what it will do is um, you can send the whole paper, you can send off a tear of it, anything, any a part of this paper is enchanted. You can write a note, and whoever you wish to send it to, you simply just hold it up in the air and it just <laughs> kind of burns in the air and then will be delivered directly to me. Once I am able to figure this out, if I can, if I can't either, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But as of yet, I'll have to look into this. I'm sorry if this is disappointing. Um, do you know where you should go next to see if... Um, I haven't the slightest idea. I mean, you could go back to Leavenwood, see if there's things to do there. Could we spend the night here? Sure. You can bunt with Lenendorf. <laughs> Lendoroth, excuse me. And she looks over to you with a kind of like a smirk and like a... Kind of like a deal with it kind of face. You will die as soon as before you step a foot in my bed. That's quite ironic. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one bed, so you'll have to make do. I'll, I'll, I'll provide as much um, cloth and blanket as I can. Uh, at this time, it's probably... This is your second day into the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's probably roughly three in the afternoon. 
really clear skies, not almost a cloud in sight, which is odd because you're um, just off the coast of the West Reach Sea. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do before we just kind of sp uh, fast forward into the into the night? Um. How about you? Anything you want to do? Am I speaking fine. to Majority at this point? No, this is just whatever you, what um, Lendroth want, would like to do before I'll it's be time to rest. I'll keeping an eye on these strange travelers the whole time they're here. Okay. Close watch? Close watch. Okay. I think that's going to be it for me then. Yeah, would you like to do same. anything? There's really... So, um, as the time goes by, Majority brings... Um, um, wool blankets and some pillows um, for you two. Uh, <laughs> the bed is probably the size of a twin, uh, made of as assorted hay and grass and bits of wool. Um, uh, Lenderoth isn't even like in the bed. He's just staring at you with a blank, intense look, with his arms folded, not saying a word. Uh. It, it's almost borderline making you feel insecure, just by the fact because you've, you've received this look once before from many of people yeah. because of your appearance, but it's almost intensified. Hey, uh, do you mind if I bring Lorenzo in here? Who is Lorenzo? Lorenzo. And at this point... <laughs> <laughs> at this point, the paws, size of baseball gloves... <laughs> Open the door and he just kind of. <laughs> uh. Lorenzo is my friend, and uh, he kind of looks at you like, <laughs> and he like he starts to stay in the room. And you and don't look that tired, so I'm gonna let him use the bed. I'm actually gonna go up to Lorenzo and I'm gonna be, kind of introduce myself as you would to an animal. Okay. I'm very familiar with animals. And as as she's like kind of standing in the room, he meets eyes with you. <laughs> And any expression of joy and excitement leaves, <laughs> and then each minor step you take towards him, he gets viciously more aggressive. Uh, she's usually I'm pretty good with animals. Uh, I'm gonna back off a little bit, actually. Okay. You can still introduce yourself. He's just very much on the defense. Oh, okay. I'll go introduce myself. Okay. In the most kind gesture I can. Okay. Uh, how, the animal. how would you like to do it? Uh... Go crouch down to his level. I'm assuming he's pretty big. Well, so he how, how tall are you? I'm like, Lorenzo, how tall is a regular elf? Lorenzo is it's, my size, It's like 5'11 so. or something okay, like that. I'm just going to say I'm 5'10. I'm 5'11. And how... So Loren he, he's Lorenzo about... Lorenzo is my size standing up. So. He, he's about a foot smaller than you. Oh, okay. So he's not that small. <laughs> uh, so uh, as you get closer, you kind of kind of crouch down just a little bit. Just to try and to you uh, reach out your hand <laughs> to do the coordinational kind of sniff. Any kind of. Do you wish to say anything? Uh, let's see. You have a very loyal companion. I can respect that. Yeah, he helped me through a very rough time once. And he kind of gets, gets a more jovial look on his face and looks back at you and loses it once more. Um, just for the hell of it, roll an animal handling check. Okay. Six. <laughs> um, because of the, the brief conversation you have with uh, Tuck, you don't notice um, him getting closer and closer to your arm, and not enough to hurt a lot, but he definitely nips at your hand, and you're able to kind of react and pull your hand away. You get the sense that he doesn't like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll back off and say companions like that should be kept close. Okay, so he may st he may sleep inside. Okay, okay. on the bed. I don't care where he sleeps. Okay, so as uh, the night goes on, wait, are they sleeping on the bed? I don't know. Who? I'm not. Okay with I'm that. not on the bed with no. him. The bats are a lot to sleep on. The no, bed. The, I I was under the impression I was just on the floor, so I invited Lorenzo to sleep on the bed. Which is happening. Yes. And uh, I'm not going to stop you. Okay. Okay, so uh, the night goes on. You have a pretty rough rest. Lorenzo is really great in the morning. Uh, however, <laughs> I slept in this bed. <laughs> Talia. Uh, Shall it should always be. <laughs> Talia, Tuck, and uh, Lendroth, 
kind of all wake up. It's about seven or so in the morning, uh, and you are all greeted by the smell of a um, beautiful cooking smoky breakfast coming in from the, the main foyer of the, 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 the room. Off in his underwear, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, and so as you leave the room, you do. You see Lenderoth <laughs> very much in his underwear, not a care in the world, uh, flipping some sort of meat in a uh, makeshift pan. Uh, you uh, notice this and you turn around. And you see Talia and Tuck dressed. <laughs> In their armor. Oh, early risers, I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will step out of here. Okay. I don't know ready. what you're gonna get do. I, I would, uh, so I'm not gonna have this be a huge detriment, but mm -hmm. you need, you guys need to eat. You don't have to say exactly what you're eat, eating and how mm -hmm. much, but if you don't eat, you're gonna take penalties later in the day because of hunger. Yeah. So after you eat, you're gonna step out. Um, I didn't realize that Elf could look so nice. <laughs> was, I'm just gonna make a strange face at Tuck. I know I'm just not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so as you deliver this well-thought, uh, flirtatious comment that you thought, I, it does not per perceive whatsoever, like, as if you didn't say anything, you just kind of... <laughs> turns around and starts eating the rest of his breakfast. Uh, so majority, eventually you guys eat your food and you kind of all come outside and you're kind of doing your stretches, getting prepared for the day. And majority comes out from the bush again uh, as a wolf. Does a repeat of performance this time, but this time makes it look a lot cooler. You get the feeling that she's trying to really impress you, and she does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and as she comes out, she says, oh, would you please follow me? Because I know it's about two days travel for you to uh, leave the forest. I, I can assist you with this. Um, so as uh, she motions you all to follow her, you spend the next ten minutes or so walking down a uh, um, path. And you are greeted with hu um, very cylindrical, circular-looking stones that are white and like as smooth and pure as they can be. And they're all kind of, they start with a wide base and they all start to form an arch. And at the top middle of the, uh, the uh, stone arch, you see like a grayish green glowing block with some druidic uh, writing that you're unable to ascertain what it says. Um, and she says, this will help you with your journey. I uh, hope I find out some more information about this symbol of yours. I, uh, again, I'm so sorry that I could be of assistance. I know you traveled far just to seek me out. I'm going to try and glance at the symbol and see if I recognize anything. Sure. Uh, because of being a druid, he uh, knows he, this looks very familiar. And it simply says, uh, gateway between planes. Between planes. Uh, and as as a uh, Lindroth is inspecting this. Majori steps past him and raises her hand up to the grayish green uh, stone in the center and it, it flutters for a second and then all of a sudden you see this vibrant uh, forest green start to spiral with a uh, white and it starts to make kind of a hypnotizing circle pattern into it and she motions you to step through. Where will this lead us? Back to town, of course. What, you don't believe me? I give you shelter and food, and you doubt me at this Before time? Before we leave, you seem to be quite knowledgeable. Yes, this is true. Um, if there is anything, anything, you can tell me about Sir Jairus, feel free to let me know at any time. I don't know much other than he's the uh, ruler and king, I guess you could say, of the Infernal Realm. As to much after that, like his power and, uh, and abilities, I, I wouldn't have an idea. I can, I can look into that if you'd like. It's not too much of a chore. No, 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 no of course not. Yeah, I, I would ask for the books, but I'm not too keen on books. So, uh, <laughs> you just... She kind of chuckles like, very lightly. So, if... And she... Please. <laughs> there, uh, 
hop on Lorenzo and sprint through the portal. Okay. okay. Do you guys wish to follow through? Yes. And before, uh, as Talia leaves, she turns to you and says, Lendoroth, I know we've worked hard for the last couple months. It seems that the time has gone by so fast. I would like to let you know that I think you have the necessary skills to go forth, and I think it would be very wise to go out and explore the land and really trying to find your true sense of purpose. And she hands you over a map, and she says, this is the map uh, of the continent. I, all, I was able to sketch out as much as I could, um, but uh, it has most major towns and cities and whatnot. But uh, and she hands it over to you. And she says, please go. Travel with them. They are bumbling fools. They need someone like you that's stern and uh, leaderish, I guess you could say. Your will is my command, Majori, and I'll bow to her. And she gives you a slight bow as well. Um, and you walk through the uh, portal. You guys come to, uh, as you're stepping, it's almost as if there was not but an instant, but as if you blink and once you open your eyes, you're at the edge of the entrance of the forest and you see the large road with the residential district of Leavenwood. Okay. What would you wish to do? Oh, uh, I'm going to give my good wizard friend a visit. The, uh, oh, the... To say Tom? Yes. <laughs> what did you say Tom a visit? Okay. What would you guys like to do? Oh my um, goodness. With Leavenwood, you've been here maybe a couple times. You uh, you didn't really go into town too much, cause, mainly because of your appearance um, and your unconfidence in your uh, likeness uh, prowess. So uh, you're kind of familiar. You do know where some stuff is. They're unaware of that, by the way. Right, right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go find, um, what's his face? The person I came with. Oh, um. This is the <laughs> salesman guy. The, the, the trader. Yes. Poop. <laughs> I totally forgot his Starts name. Starts the G, I know that. Yeah. I think. You will find them. I will find him. You're not sure if he's still here, because you know he came in with trade, and it's been yes. two days since you've last seen him. Yes, but... I will find him to try to see if anything's happened while I've been absent. Okay, and you? I'm going to tail Talia. I'm just going to kind of follow along. Okay, there. so uh, you t Tuck <laughs> takes... Uh, you see, as you as he walks off, he definitely has like a, a, a confidence in his step, but not too overpowering where it's too dramatic. You spend the next 40 minutes traveling back to uh, the, the Mystics and Wonders. It takes 40 minutes to get there. It's a bit, it's a, it's a... I'm on Lorenzo. <laughs> oh, you're on Lorenzo? Yes. Yeah. It takes was... about 20 minutes. Okay. And you're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smooth gallop. And uh, uh, people, you're passing many different kinds of people and traders and merchants and uh, many different types of level status of wealth of people. And they all just kind of turn heads and they look at you and some are like... And some are just like, kind of like, really? You're going to fucking ride a dog in the middle of town? So yeah, you make your way to Mr. Prison Wonders, and I... Uh, do you wish to step in? I do. Do you want to take Lorenzo in there with you? Uh, Lorenzo is just going to keep watch for a minute. Okay. <laughs> you step into the room, and you see... <laughs> you see Zayton kind of... Kind of... <laughs> throwing shit in everywhere, and like, some potions are... Uh, weirdly colored colors you've probably never seen before and as they hit the ground different effects are like pff, some things are appearing some things are disappearing like the colors are changing it's, it's quite a sight hey it's my good old friend Zaytom ah! <laughs> and he turns around oh good lord <laughs> what do you want what do you want oh I was just checking out to see if I could get any enhancements <laughs> I also searched this time. <laughs> uh, he looks at you begrudgingly almost. He's just kind of almost disgusted and surprised at the same time. And he's like, ah. <laughs> Okay, uh, what, what would you like? Um, 
Um, hold on, sorry. <laughs> I have five empty vials that I'd like to fill with useful potions, and maybe you can give me a discount because they're such good friends. I hope you're charismatic. Uh, Tuck looks at you. Uh, he looks at you. Um, My intelligence is retarded. <laughs> He, he, he that's why I said the book comment earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he kind of looks at you and like, <sighs> Let me try to explain this in a way that would make sense. <laughs> First off, I don't feel vials with potions. You buy them whole stocked. <laughs> and the whole time he's like shaking his head in confusion, almost a little annoyed, and a little bit of disgust. I don't know what you're talking about with all this words, but <laughs> I'd like all these vials filled with something. Ah, uh, okay. So, how many vials do you want to give him? Uh, all five. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you, you, he takes the vials. He's like, "I'll see what I have." Uh, and he t he goes back into the back room, and you hear more. <laughs> <laughs> and things like flying around and there's dust clouds kind of <laughs> slowly flowing out of the room. And he comes back about ten minutes later and he's like, Here? I don't know what these are, but they'll do something. <laughs> Alright, thank you. <laughs> That's <laughs> <even> kind. <laughs> That's twenty gold. <laughs> and he's like holding his hand out urgently like he wants you to pay him and he wants you to leave. We're such good friends and we have such a bond. You're gonna betray me like this? I mean, he looks even more confused now. He's just like, What? You've only bought things for me twice now. <laughs> yeah, but you loved it so much. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> okay, 19. Can I, can I, can I, can I yes. do a charisma roll for that? Persuasion? Uh, persuasion. That's what I meant. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check. Jesus. 20. Not and a he, natural, but just one. He looks at you. He, he kind of... Uh, <laughs> you don't... You feel as if you didn't persuade him. He's just lowering the price so you leave him alone. <laughs> Go ahead and mark 15 gold for the... Solid. And for your inventory, write five potions with a five, question... Five mystery potions. <laughs> five mystery vials with a question mark. This should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I'm going to uh, just walk out the door and wink at him. And as you do this, <laughs> it's almost as if that wink had a projectile and he dodged. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay, see you later, Tuck. <laughs> and as you leave, it's just a cloth door, but as you leave the cloth all of a sudden turns into a steel door <laughs> that has no handle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you like to go, man? I'm just going to hop on Lorenzo and find Talia. 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 Okay. Alright, so what would you like to do? Oh yeah, you're going to find your friend. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Or perception. Either one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Your perception is yeah. plus six, so... You, so that's two perception. She's got 21. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, you, you're looking around, and you don't see his caravans anywhere. Because um, they they were set up in a almost in a horseshoe shape when he first arrived. So you start asking around, and they're like... Do I notice the ship I came on? Yes, and you find someone who uh, is like... Oh, yeah, he, he's just about to take off. He's down on the pier. Okay. You wish to pursue yes. the pier? Okay, so you spend the next uh, 20 minutes going down towards the pier and going down the stairs, uh, the stone brick stairs that are rough and weathered, but very fine and etiquette. Um, as you see this, you see... Um, Gorith? Gorith, yes! Gorith! You see Gorith uh, commanding people. Just, ah, get over there, put this over there! And he's just... Almost not even saying words. He's just kind of putting his fingers and shouting. <laughs> and men are just kind of... Like, they know what he means, but they're just acting like they can understand what he's saying. Carrying uh, crates of miscellaneous things back on the ship. Okay. I'll approach Gorith and ask him if anything has happened in the next 
in the past few days? Anything weird or mysterious? And he's like, Ah, oh, Talia! It's been almost two days. Where have you been? <laughs> Just scoff in the background. Anyways. <laughs> he's like, who the hell is your friend? <laughs> He just tagged along with me because he felt like it. Because he's giving you trouble? <laughs> just and, again. and mind you, this he's he's mere only mere human, but he's almost six four, six five, and he probably weighs around two twenty, so he's a pretty stocky guy. And he's like, Does he give me trouble? And he like cracks his knuckles and like cracks his neck while he's looking at you. <laughs> no, he's been decent, I guess. Decent? He's- He's been mysterious, is what I'm trying to get at. What you hiding, pal? <laughs> <laughs> Am I intimidated at all? It's up to you. What is it to the likes of you? And you see, you, you see him take a very deep breath through his teeth, and he starts to like kind of look at you, and then because of the lighting, he can all, he can make the makeshift out of your face, and he like. Front, goes to a worried and even more angrier expression. And he's ah! Over here! And whoever was around, two uh, people drop their crates and start coming up to you and they're going to make a... Uh, they're going to try and grapple you each by the arm. Okay. Go ahead and make either an acrobatics check or athletics. I'll make an athletics check. And this is happening just mm-hmm. right in front of you. Uh, eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as they come up... You almost don't even hear them coming, and they grab you by the arms and almost pin them behind your back. And you're now, f- and uh, Gorith steps forward and kind of kneels down at your level. You better leave Talia alone, or you'll deal with me, you fucking shit. Um, do you see something that I don't? This man is a drow, not to be trusted. They're vile, evil creatures. And he pulls your head back and kind of... Do you have long hair? Mm-hmm. He grabs his hair... Long silver hair. He grabs his long silver hair by the back of his head and pulls him back. So his back is almost arching now. He's like, look at this beast. They steal. They kill. Anything, you name it. Am I anywhere near with Lorenzo? Um... I... You don't really know where they went. Oh, you, okay. you can try and look for them if you want. Can I roll perception? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, more of an investigation, actually. Investigation. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. You're having way too much fun riding the right now. <laughs> 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 um, well, he hasn't done anything yet, that's so... And that's the point, and he... Pulls his blade. It's this very fine-looking cutlass, almost it's jeweled and it has like different colored gems in the hilt of it. And he pull, puts it to uh, your neck. Is like that's the point. I'm, yet I'm going to assume that Majority Goodrich is a pretty common name, and most people know who she is. Give or take. Okay. Well, he came. Drop with... your blade, or feel the wrath of Majority. And he kind of looks at you. Almost kind of like embarrassed and disappointed because he wanted to very much spill your blood. And he kind of draws his blade and he kind of motions the um, merchants to let him go. And he, for the rest of the conversation, he doesn't even acknowledge you exist. Okay. I'll just flip my hood up and <laughs> close my cloak, kind of butt hurt a little bit. Okay. And uh, so, anyways, <laughs> what were you saying, Talia? Um, did anything weird happen? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, Other uh, that's than what just happened. That's why we're. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're leaving right now. Actually, the mayor, Derek, uh, Derek Bradstone, I think is his name. Okay. He's ever about two days ago. The last time I seen you, he's been going on this like monstrous kind of. Rage almost. He's going to people, telling them they need to pay more, and doing vile acts like uh, executing people for very minute things, like such as taking a piece of bread 
So that did they ever tell you stories about Brutus? Was he kind of acting like him, or I have no idea who that is. Okay. Well, I was just asking to see if you've heard stories to see if they were trying to compare. I don't know. I wanted nothing to do with it, so I am leaving town. Do you want okay. to come with me? Yuri is very nice this time of year, as you're aware. I know. Please I'll come join me. I'll stay just to help out my friends. I guess you could call them. Are you sure? And he kind of, without looking at Lendoroth, he kind of notions, notions his head. Uh, he's not the only one. There's a dumb butt back behind us. Oh, good lord, Tommy. <laughs> You've only been in town for two days. Uh. <sighs> and he says, well, okay then. You know where to reach me. Sign right to you. I will hand you a letter, though, before I go to oh. give to my parents. Oh, okay. It's just to ask how they're doing and whatnot. Sure, I'll do, I'll be sure to deliver this to them. Anyways, as I was saying, safe travels and Saren Ray to you. Okay. And you uh, leave the pier. Any where would you like to go next? Try to find him. What about you? We'll okay. just kind of tag along in the background. Okay. Not really saying much. All right, you guys end up meeting in the middle of town, kind of. A couple hundred feet away from uh, the bustling crow. Um, anything else you'd wish to do? It's about 11 or so. Uh, Should we get some food? Let's or? find the barkeep. Okay. Oris? Go inside the bustling crow and find Oris. Okay. Uh, so we three take a minute to uh, walk to the bustling crow. Um, you know, it, it's not as popular in Bangdon as it usually is, but because it's quite early in the morning. Um, but you go in, and there's a couple of patrons sitting here and there at random tables and uh, at the bar itself. And you see Oris currently tending to someone and giving them a drink. <clears throat> um, Oris, uh, we talked to... Um, Oris and Orcus are confusing the hell out of them. Yeah. Oris. Oris is the tender of the Dustin Pro. And he's like, uh, before you can finish your sentence, he's like, oh! Oh! Like, he's trying to act like he's surprised, but you get the sense he doesn't want you to say what you're about to say. And uh, he finishes pouring uh, some ale into the patron's um, tankard. And he motions you three to uh, a back, the back room behind the bar. Do you wish to go? Yes. All right. So as you get in there, he's like, "Well, well, uh, did you, did she, did she help?" Kind of. She, she said she didn't recognize it at all, but she was looking through her books and everything just to see if she could find anything. But most likely, she doesn't really know much. Ah, uh, that's severely disappointing. I, uh, hmm. I just spoke with Gorith, which who I came with. Right. And he said there's been odd activity happening with the mayor. What is going on? Oh, God. Well, okay, so Garrett has always been kind of an asshole, right? Um, but recently he's been very, very um, destructive, I guess you could say. Uh, I've never liked the guy anyways, and he... Basically, he's pulled the rug out from under me. As you know, my great 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 grandfather is the one who settled this town, and uh, I was basically supposed to be the guy behind the curtain, you know, running the scenes, being the mayor. And Derek just came in one day and kind of took the town by force. And so you don't know if anything happened within his home or anything. Uh, other than he's been taxing people out the ass. Uh, and executing people who can't pay. There's been several um, deaths. It's been really bad. Everyone's deaths. Just, yeah, he's been hanging people. For not paying taxes? Yeah, I don't know where this came from. He's all, Like I said, he's always been an asshole, but nothing like this. Have you heard anything on the down low? How big is the town of uh, Ludwood? Um... <clears throat> if it's on a, it's on a coastline, uh, mainly on a cliff. Um, it's a uh, if you were to walk from one side of the town to the other, where you guys came from the forest, 
It'd probably take like an hour or so. Okay. It's it's not a city, but it's Population not. Population size? Population is probably like a thousand, fifteen hundred. Okay. It's, it's a trade city, so there's so tons decent of... So amount of town guards. So the yeah. mayor's going to be protected. Yes. You can't just walk in and give the mayor a lesson or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. And what were you saying, Tucker? I'm sorry. <sighs> um. With the mayor, have you heard anything on the down low on why he's doing what he's doing? Or maybe if there's been odd people with him? Maybe it's, it's something. in the city, but... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe it has... And as you say that, he look, looks over to you. He's like, oh, God. <laughs> what have you... I'm, I'm, I could see past the whole tiefling thing, but... Where'd you pick up this goon? With the, Majori. He's bad luck. And he doesn't even finish his sentence. He's like, oh... He, he, <laughs> he's never heard Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> he's never heard your name, nor what you were. All he knows is Majority took in a pupil a couple months, almost a year ago, to uh, train, I guess you could say. Um, but then it, it all comes full circle and he realizes who you are and he kind of he doesn't say sorry, but he gives you a nod of apology. Um uh, so as uh, as you are asking about what Tuck said, uh, he says, well, I actually have something to tell you guys. I, um, I wasn't sure about telling you before because I didn't know if you could be trusted. But after your acts of valor against Brutus and being able to walk in and out of Leavenwood almost nearly untouched, I think, I think uh, you're a force to be reckoned with. I can't say anything right now, though. I come back around just an hour past dusk. Back here at the bar, when everybody decides, when, when no one's around. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, can I get a pint of water, please? Oh, God. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My finest water from the highest mountain, from the forest land. And this is all back at the bar now. He just kind of, he doesn't even give you a tanker. He gives you like a small, tiny <laughs> tin cup. Here. Don't drink too fast. <laughs> Do you want to stay the rest of the time? Yeah. You got about you got about out. six hours I'm or so. Chill outside with Lorenzo. You're going to chill outside. Mm -hmm. I'll just stay at the bar. And you? I'll sit with Dahlia. Okay. Dad, anything else you'd like to talk about? Mm -mm. Fast forward. Fast forward. And so over the next couple hours, you're trying to sit in there and get very bored at times and. Uh, Talia, you find this time to be prime to meditate and say your prayers to uh, Saren Ray. Um, as, and Tux is trying to chill outside with Lorenzo, trying to teach him some more tricks. <laughs> uh, Lendoroth is just kind of sitting there, looking at you, waiting for you to do something. Maybe he should follow. Maybe he should just sit there. He's just kind of waiting. Anyways, it's as... Really a, in a creepy way, but... Right. <laughs> Okay. A look of guidance, almost. Like he's looking for something to happen or something to do. Uh, time passes, um, and uh, the closer sun starts to drop, uh, people begin to leave, and Oris at one point starts shooing people out. Um, Tuck comes back inside, and he's like, Okay, guy, uh, you have to trust me. Do you trust me? Yes. That's of what I know, yes. Uh, he doesn't even... He, he respects you, but he doesn't wait for you to answer. That's fair. I'm not going to answer anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he each gives you a blindfold. Uh, a pretty thick blindfold. And he, uh, I'd like you to take these and wrap them around your eyes. And he, he hands all three of you one. If you don't mind, can Lorenzo come in? Where we're going, Lorenzo won't be able to travel. Okay. Okay. He kind of shows you... A room that Lorenzo can stay in for the time. Okay. As you guys come down, you have the blindfolds around your eyes. Um, and you have no idea where you are. You, you haven't left the tavern. But over the next 30 minutes, you hear a series of wood planks creaking. Um, some sort of lever being pulled. 30 and, minutes? Uh, and eventually you start watching downstairs and 
to your knowledge, there were no stairs that went down into the tavern. Oh, my favorite kind of place. <laughs> um, as you get down to the what looks like the tunnel, he instructs you to then take off your blindfolds. I'm sorry. I, I do trust you. Believe me, I do. But it's for the sake of safety and uh, secrecy. Does and anyone know about this place? Can then? I roll some sort of check to, to kind of figure out where we came from? I'm pretty good. Yeah, but, um, go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. Passive? Um, I guess it... Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, we'll go 14. 14, um, you don't know where you are, because you're not too familiar with Leavenwood. Yeah. Um, but I can tell we're underground. Yeah, you're, you're underground, and you take a, look, a second to look at the tunnel you're in. Um, there's a... It's about six feet high, and, um... Dirty, mossy stone brick, and there's a bit of water at the bottom. You take a second and figure this is probably some sort of sewer system. Okay. As he turns around, he, he uh, motions for you to follow, and you spend the next couple minutes walking down this tunnel, and you kind of hear the plip, plop, plip, and then you eventually hear like some large thing trying to <laughs> flow into the water. Um, you come to a point where there's a wooden door, and there's someone standing in front of it. And then you hear Oris speak a language neither of you recognize. Um, it's just a series. It's almost like pig Latin. You don't even know what it means. Okay. And the none do of us recognize this. No. No. Okay. Unless any of you knows, no thieves can't. No. Nope. Okay. So as he does this, the door slides into the wall, and the guard sets by, and you're greeted with the smell of ham. There's several torches along the walls. Um, as you walk in, there it's a big foyer with a long stretch table with several different um, people you don't really recognize sitting at the table with hooded um, robes and they're black. Um, and above you see a balcony um, with a, a person standing up with his robe with his hood revealed, and there's a staircase that goes. Up to the balcony. I'm gonna make a perception check. Is it the same robes as the person, as the people with Brutus? Go ahead. Actually, you would just know this. No, you do recognize these robes, for these are the same robes that Oris was wearing the first night he wanted you to meet him on the pier. Oh, shit. Sure. So, uh, as you go, go forth, you, you're very confused, and he turns to you, he's like, I know this is all a lot to take in, but please just follow with me. And he, he leads you upstairs, and you see, uh, you see uh, the, the, the man who is on the balcony with the, the hood revealed. He turns to you, he's like, Ah, Oris! So glad you can make it back in time. And he looks at you three. Them? These are the people you got? And Oris says, Hey, it, this is all... Is this figure a male or a female? He's a male. Uh, as you take a look at him, he has jet black hair that is um, long that goes about to his shoulders and uh, two braids that start from right here and then meet in the back of his head and go down. It's kind of elvish type way. He, he's uh, yes, he is. Uh, he is elven. Oh, so I would kind of like recognize now the you, sense of him. No, you you definitely you, you see what he is. His face is revealed. Um, as he as he's talking about to Oris, he's like, "Trust me, these guys, these are the heroes Levinwood needs. I've seen them in action. Look what they did to Brutus." And he's like, "Ah, so these are the guys that disposed of good old Brutus." Like, yes, yes. And he looks at you three, um, and uh, he's like, "Well, welcome to the Hand, the Thieves Guild of Levinwood." Um, he's like, uh, he says, uh, we have a very large grasp over the lands, and most major cities, even small towns, have some presence of the hand. Do you, do you know anything about Collinsburg? He, he sits there and s he gives you a blank expression, and he's like, no, I'm sorry. I know of the Collinwood Forest. Anyways, uh, but like I was saying, there is a we have a presence in almost every major city and small town. We are essentially the underbelly of the world. We are the 
underground autonomy that makes the world live and breathe as you see it. I asked Oris to bring you three here because Garrett has broken deals and promises to us and has been acting very dramatic, I guess you could say. What we need you to do is simply go into his manor, uh, dispose of Derek, leave unnoticed, please. We don't need people knowing what's going on here. And leave. And that's all you need to do. And I'll promise you this. And he looks you in the eyes, not affected by your appearance. I promise I'll make it your while. So, what do you say? We don't have a lot of time. Where are we traveling to? His manor, of course. Where he lives. How? We would be a fool not to take up your offer. Ah, the drow speaks true. Do you know anything of Sargeras? Kind of looks at you like, really, now is the time you're going to ask such stupid questions? <laughs> well, he may have a part as to maybe why mayor is acting the way he is. I have no idea who this Sargeras is. However, that's I all I need to know. I'm ready to take your quest. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to say something else, right? Now. Nah. <laughs> he uh, he looks at you with a sigh and then looks at Oris like, "Fucking really?" <laughs> He's like, "Anyways, for Christ, no, Christ doesn't exist." <laughs> <laughs> now you have you have a couple of options. Like I said, I would really prefer if you kept this on the down low. Don't be seen, and if you do, be swift and haste about it. Because, like I said, people of Leavenwood don't need to know what is really running their city, and we don't want them to know what is really going on behind the scenes. And he goes to explain that there's a, a couple options. You can go uh, full front into the house. There are several ways to get in. He goes ahead and explains how there is, um, there is a back door. There are several windows. On the second floor, there's a balcony on the side of the house and very tall trees that could be climbed. Does he explain if he knows his schedule? Uh, he, he, good question. So he, he looks to you and he says, Ah, yes. This is the questions that need to be asked. We know Derek is home right now. And it's about 8.30. Okay. Uh, nine, it's about 9. And uh, he says he's in his home somewhere. We know, we don't know how many, but we know there are guard in the house. Because ever since he's been on this foolish, childish tra uh, rampage, he's been keeping... Uh, guard into his house because he knows that he's stepped on our toes and he's protecting himself. I guess that we don't know how many. But that, anyways. Do you know when he leaves in the morning? Or uh, at night? Or if he just has some random whereabouts in the middle of the night? No. Not from our, from our intel. He just stays inside and is up to something. We don't know. Do you know if there's any justifiable reason why he's doing what he's doing? We have with Brutus. We know that whatever the hell those things were was why he was acting that way. Brutus was an asshole anyways, but an uh, attractive one at that, but... Here you know, we go again. He rolls his eyes. I have no idea. We just I just know he needs to be stopped and be disposed of. Is it that, needs to happen tonight. Is tonight. that the only thing that will suffice? Uh, yes. Uh, also, we also have a tunnel system that will lead directly to his house in the basement. We don't know, like I said, we, I don't know what to expect. However, that's probably your safest route. What would you wish to do? We should take the tunnels. Okay, I'm in with that. All right. Is there anything you would like to prepare for before you leave? Um, I would like to somehow um, get Lorenzo. At this point, Lorenzo's back at the tavern. Um, he wouldn't. If you wanted to backtrack and go on top of the land and go to the front of the keep, then you no. could do that. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we should be stealthy as possible. Anything else you wish to do? 
Nope. So, um, Tantrin, the man uh, who's been talking to you, leads you to the tunnel that you need to take. Do you know if, uh, oh wow, I forgot his name, Garrick? Sure, the, yeah. yes, the yeah. mayor. Do you know, is he very powerful, or is it mostly just his guard we have to worry about? Um, to our knowledge, he is just but a man, but a skillful one at that. Um, so more manipulative. He is a man of power, and a man of, uh, will, I guess you could say. He has, he has the brains and the brawn, uh, but like I said, he does have guard, so be wary. Okay. So as he leads you to the tunnel, uh, you see light go until it just fades into a black. Um, do any of you have torches? Um, I think I, I think actually do. Hold on. You, okay, you have dark vision. Do you? Okay, your dark vision. Do you have dark? You have dark vision. What do you? Do you have dark vision? Uh, I do have dark vision. You have low light. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll have uh, Talia just kind of hand on to me as we go on. Okay. Um, no funny business now. <laughs> oh please, don't flatter yourself. <laughs> Anyways, so you uh, start treading down the watery pasture. Your character's trying to make sense. I think. <laughs> You'll see. All right. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Not sure. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so I as the weird glances you've given me in my underwear. <laughs> 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 So you spend the next 10 minutes or so treading the t tunnel until you're abruptly met with a dead end with a ladder. And as you look up, about 20 feet or so up the ladder, you see a bit of stone tab, but it's colored differently from the rest of the ceiling. Okay. What's our way in? Who, what is the marching order? Who's going first, second, and last? Well, you're first. I'm second, probably last. Well, I'm pro I think I'm the smallest one in the group, so... Yeah. Okay. You're also our fighter, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can take up the rear and can try and be a little bit more stealthy, but... Yeah. So, as you go up, I need you to make a strength check. I think the best way in is once we can get past, once we're sure we're past the guards, I can sneak into his room. Okay. Strength is 18. With your strength modifier? Mm-hmm. 18. Okay. So, uh, this stone tab, uh, tablet almost is nothing. You're just kind of... Throw it to the side, and as you come up, you find yourself in what looks like the basement with a very nice crafted um, cobblestone floor, very nice dark gray stone brick walls, and then you see caves and caves and caves of ale and different types of wine rafts on either side of the room. All right. As you guys make your way up, um, you see a small hallway that goes down um, with a door, and then um, just before that, there is another door, um, but it's made of iron. What would you like to do? We could kill Gagaroth, or we could oh. get drunk as fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's your chance. <laughs> oh god. Um, I'm not a. I, I think I'll 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 just uh, I'll go wait by the iron door. <laughs> <laughs> so I only tease. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna stop this time. Would you like to drink? <laughs> huh? Would no. you like to drink? I'm only. Two. How about you, Talia? Mm, I'm good. Okay, so Todd is waiting by the iron door. Like I just said, there's a wooden door that down the, a little bit further down the hallway. Actually, I'm gonna have a pint. Okay, there are no tankards. Okay. Um, so you either. Oh, I'm just gonna. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> they are currently not. They don't have a spigot yet. So you take um, what is it that you have? Your mace. And you're trying to. <laughs> Made a very nice dent, almost too big for what you were wishing, um, <laughs> and it just starts gurgling. How how long do you wish to drink? Uh, enough to give me a slightly buzzed. Okay, so he takes for the first minute. It's almost impressive. He's just gurgling down this <laughs> ale, not getting a lot of it for, as it's drenching his head. It's kind of a sight to see. Um, the next um, dexterity-based check you make is at the disadvantage. Um, so yeah, you, do you wish to go through the iron door or the wooden door? Are we all partied together again? Yeah, you're all in the same are room. We doing, are we playing the advantage-disadvantage world where, where we're doing two dice? Yeah, so you roll a d20 twice. So if we have an advantage, we'll roll two. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the thing is, is we have to take a chance to I feel see like it. as, um, everyone make a perception check real quick. Passive? Um, just, just a, a natural. Uh, so I suck today. 
So, uh, ten. Seventeen. Nice. Um, as oh. as you guys are about to ta- start talking, you hear the uh, coming from the other side of the iron door. The iron door. Oh. Um, sounded very wary. I'm. How long did we decide if my thing lasts the length of battle or an hour? An hour. I'm going to go into my demon form. Okay, so. Oh. <laughs> I shit myself. <laughs> so we have three, right? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. We haven't really introduced that well, so... Alright, well... Okay, so... Okay, you don't know anything about me, so... Tiefling, uh, his tiefling appearance... Do I... What do I know? What does my character know about tieflings? All you know is the typical tiefling, um, just like drow, they're perceived as evil, vile creatures, almost... Mon- they're considered half-monster. Oh, okay. Um, usually uh, so tied to a... Tied to a demon of some sort, made of, either made by... via pact or, um... Um, promise or bargain or anything like that. Okay. Um, but he, so he's already had kind of a demonic form, but you see, uh, he kind of bends down a little bit and his veins start to grow intensely. Um, and his hair kind of sticks up a bit. Um, and as he comes back up, his eyes are jet black, no iris, no pupil. And, um, this appearance wise doesn't look more his horns have grown a little bit more and start to curl outward. But other than that, nothing changes appearance wise, but you get the feeling that the intensity in the room has very much um, dampened. So I'd like you two to step back and watch because it's about to get loud. Oh, so. this is just getting fun. Okay. So what would you wish to do? I'm going to grab uh my morning star and bash the iron door in. So I'm roll the strength check. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? <laughs> I have a boost of strength in my demon form. Do right? We decided strength, speed, and then um, my ability. Go ahead and just. Just for player knowledge, is that your hero power or is that just. Type That's of my thing? hero power. Oh, okay. But my, I, I gain another ability while I'm in my demon form. Fun. Um, so. Because it's an inanimate, inanimate object, uh, just go ahead and roll again. <laughs> Is it locked? No, you can check. No one checked. So, <laughs> so fifteen, and then was it plus one? No, we're just gonna plus bust one our way so, in. I thought we were gonna be on top of your strength already. Like, so that's nineteen. It's just him. Okay, so how yeah. He is. Uh, Not so you go to like viciously, you kind of grunt a little bit, and you're like. Mm. No, that won't work. And you turn around and <laughs> it makes a very loud vibration of a noise. <laughs> um, um, and the door just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody even check to see if it were locked? You got the impression it was unlocked. Yeah. I didn't, when you said iron door, I didn't. My my actual thro- thought process is that there was no handle. <laughs> <laughs> So as as um, Tyler, I want to shot. What have I gotten myself into? 